Well, we've got ourselves a big topic today, uh, certainly a topic we'll see on a lot of free response questions, and we can gobble up lots of points. A lot of times it's four, five, maybe even six points uh, within a serious question when we start talking about interval of convergence and having to check the endpoints and stuff. But first of all, let's uh, introduce uh, you know our lingo regarding a power series and just make sure we're all on the same page. A power series is a series that is now a function of x. And so let's understand that in its simplest form. We're going to say that it's a series that's a function of x. And so it's usually in this form right here. Starts at 0, goes to infinity, and it's a sub n times x raised to the n. And so as we expand this, we get a sub 0, x to the 0, which isn't really necessary to write. a sub 1, x to the first, a sub 2, x squared, and yada, 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 a sub n, x to the n. And then, of course, can make sure there's a dot, dot, dot at the end of this because there's an infinite number of terms. And basically, x is a variable. That shouldn't be a surprise, hopefully. Um, and the a sub n's are constants that we call the coefficients of this series. All right, we've seen a lot of questions. It's very popular if to ask, you know, what's the coefficient of the third degree term or something like that, and they're just asking for the a sub n. Again, just a little bit more lingo. Now, for each fixed x, you know, for instance, you can say, um, you know, what if x was one half? What if we plugged a one half in, or what if we plugged a two in? What if we plugged a three in? So that's what we mean by each fixed x. The series is then a series of constants. Okay, once you plug a number in for x, all it is is you're adding up an infinite number of constants, and then we can test that for either obviously convergence or divergence. The same old question we've seen a you know a million times over and over again. Uh, now, the sum of the series, as we start to add up all the terms, and assuming it's still in terms of x, it now represents a function. And so we could say that f of x is equal to the a sub 0 plus the a sub 1x plus the a sub 2x squared plus dot, dot, dot. And it just goes on for and ever and ever. Um, as long as you have an infinite amount of terms, we're going to use the equal sign. Once you take away the dot, 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 and you create a finite number of terms, then we're going to start to use the approximation sign. Now, for that particular function, we would say uh, whose domain is the set of all x for which the series converges. So basically, you know, there's going to usually typically be, you know, a group of x values, an interval of x values that cause it to converge, otherwise it'll diverge. But we'll see there's basically three cases for interval of convergence here. Just a couple of more pointers here before we dive in. Just a quick notice here, f resembles a polynomial. The only difference is it's a polynomial that has infinitely many terms, and that's where the magic is. Uh, for a given power series, and here's a little bit different lingo, they're using a c sub n instead of an a sub n. It doesn't matter, it's just like we said, they're constants that we call coefficients. And then we've got here, the, when you look right there, they'll tell you where it's centered. Use, according to this notation, we would say that this one is centered at, that's supposed to be an at sign, x equals a. So there are three possibilities and that's it, there's only three. Number one. Every single series that is ever created is guaranteed to converge at its center point. That's a bare minimum. We know that for a fact going into each and every problem. Now, we're hoping for more, though. We could then say, this is the best case scenario, that this particular series converges for all values of x. In other words, it doesn't matter what number you plug in right there. You're going to get a convergent series whether you plug in x equals 10, x equals a million, or x equals one half. It doesn't matter. However, the third one is the most likely one and that we're going to see on our AP exam, and it basically says there's a positive number r, and that r is your radius of convergence, basically. And such that, as long as x minus a is within that r value, you've got a convergent series. Otherwise, if it's greater than r or outside of r, then it diverges. And so basically what we usually do is we take this rascal and we rewrite it as a compound inequality like such and then we add a to both sides isolating the x in the middle and then we go test the endpoints to see if the endpoints converge and just a real quick recap why are we testing the endpoints uh, because we're going to use the ratio test of course and we said if um, if the L value, which is the answer to your ratio test, if it equals 1, we're inconclusive. We're not sure, and we have to, uh, whoa, what did I just spell? Let's try that again. 
inconclusive. All right, this looks better. <laughs> okay, um, we would then have to check each individual endpoint to see what the specific case is. All right, quick train of thought. What's going through my mind when I do see this particular question? For what values of x is uh, the series convergent? Basically, that's just an alternative way of asking us what is the interval of convergence. And I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, is it a geometric series? Because if it is, life just got a lot easier. And if it was geometric, we would say, well, the absolute value of R has got to be less than 1. And now I don't even have to worry about the endpoints. It's super, super easy. However, if it's non-geometric, which most of them are, then we're going to instantly go to our ratio test. And this is where a lot of the work lies. And this is why it's worth so many points on a free response question. So we're going to say the limit as n approaches infinity. Notation is going to need to be very punctual. So we've got the n plus first term all over the nth term. Now here's what I like to do. History says that uh, we get very confused when there's these two variables in play like the n and the x. And we're trying to evaluate the limit not as x approaches infinity, but only as n approaches infinity. So as I simplify this rascal, I like to pull my non-n values out front. As I cancel those guys, I get an x to the first power. Let's pull it out. It's still in absolute values. I then write the limit as n, emphasis on the n. And then we'll simplify these rascals, and we'll get just the quantity n plus 1. Now here's the trick. We want this limit right from the get-go. We want this limit to be less than 1. As long as it's less than 1, we have a convergence series. Here's the problem, though. Do you see this little rascal? As n approaches infinity, what's the value of that limit? Infinity. And when you multiply that by x, well, you definitely get infinity, which is never going to be less than 1. So I'll put a little not less than sign. And so what we're going to say, our conclusion is this. This series only, only converges at its center, and it's centered at x equals 0. Nothing else. Nothing else. That's the only place it converges to. Um, if you tried to plug in x equals 0.1, it would diverge. If you plugged in 5, it would diverge. Go ahead and try it if you don't believe me. We're going to see a little more interesting scenario here on this particular one. Again, they're just asking for the interval of convergence. And uh, not a bad time to hit that pause button and see if you can motor right through this bear. Time yourself. See if you can come up with an accurate answer within you know a minute, minute and a half. Um, working on good notation here, I'm going to set my ratio test up because it's not quite geometric. X minus 3 quantity n or to the n plus 1. Notice right off the bat, you can make a comment to yourself that this particular power series is centered at x equals 3, multiplied by the reciprocal of that nth term. And we're saying to ourselves, we're kind of thinking in the back of our mind, we want this to be less than 1. That's our goal. We want it to be less than 1. So we'll start to clean things up here a little bit. Uh, cancel that bear with that bear, and we've got x minus 3 to the first power. Hope you enjoy the background music here. And then we got n over n plus 1. Again, we're saying we want that entire left side to be less than 1. That's our goal. Evaluate your limit now. You've pulled out the x's. The value of that limit is 1. If you multiply by what you pulled out, you simply get x minus 3. We want it to be less than 1. So let's fly right through this rascal. We're going to rewrite it as a compound inequality. Add 3 to all sides. And here, I cannot emphasize this enough. Don't stop yet. we got to go check those endpoints because they are inconclusive at this moment. So we're going to take the 2. We're going to go ahead. We're going to plug the 2 back into the original. I'm going to make room on this side. If I plug a 2 in, if I said x equals 2, I'm going to get a series. Uh, I'd get negative 1 to the n all over n. It's an alternating harmonic. I can call it by name. That's enough to justify that it converges. If I test the other endpoint, I'll plug in x equals 4. Let's see, I've got 1 to the n, which is 1. This is just the basic harmonic. Again, address him by name. That's good enough to say it diverges. Let's come on back down here. And I'm going to say that my interval of convergence, closed endpoint on the left, open endpoint on the right, there it is. 
Now, by the time I'm all done with this one, I'm going to identify two things. Not just the interval of convergence, but I'm also going to identify the radius of convergence. For instance, on the last problem, the last one was centered at 3, and the endpoints were 2 and 4, so I would have said the radius was 1, because that's a distance from the center to an endpoint. Um, this one's, I don't think we've ever done one before that included a radical in it, so we'll see if that makes things interesting at all. But we're going to set up our n plus first term here. And that's going to give me radical n plus 2 on the bottom, multiplied by the reciprocal. We're getting pretty darn good at this ratio test, aren't we? We're starting to fly through these. We're starting to dominate this particular topic. We're thinking to ourselves, we want it to be less than 1. That's our goal. That's what we're hoping for. That's when it'll be convergent. Clean this up just a little bit. Say, uh, let's see, that gives me negative 3 to the first. This gives me x to the first. I'm going to pull those rascals out. Notice the absolute values do allow me to basically extinguish that negative sign, kind of put the fire out, so to speak. And then we've got radical n plus 1 over n plus 2. And here's what's happening. As n gets huge, guess what? You've heard me say it a hundred times. The plus one's irrelevant. The plus two's irrelevant. Compare the power of the numerator and denominator. We got same over same. So I'm thinking that whole limit just evaluates to one, multiplied by what you pulled out. And we're thinking that the absolute value of 3x got to be less than one. Let's see here. So negative one's less than 3x, which is less than one. Negative one-third's the left end point. Positive one-third is the right end point. Now remember, we were centered at zero, so the radius of convergence is locked in at one-third already. Okay, that's half my answer. I just got to check the endpoints. We're going to go back and we're going to plug each of them into the original. Let's see what we got. If we let x equal negative one-third, let's see what we get. Um, on top, if I multiplied the two terms in the numerator together... I'd actually end up with positive 1 to the n, which is 1, all over radical n plus 1. We'd actually technically have to do a comparison test here. We'd compare it to something like 1 over radical n. We've got a bigger denominator on the left, therefore it's a smaller fraction. Uh-oh, this may not even work. Because uh, I think the bigger one's divergent, and if the bigger one diverges, that's inconclusive. Okay, comparison test did not work. The next thing I would do is I would do an integral test. da 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 right there and the integral would go from 1 or actually 0 in this case it looks like because I got a 0 right there to infinity work your way through that bear you're definitely gonna see that it diverges okay left point diverges if we go ahead and check the right end point I'm gonna get multiply the two terms in the numerator together I got negative 1 to the nth power Ooh, I love alternating series nothing gets better than an alternating series we got an alternating series we're gonna say that the limit as n approaches infinity um, for that nth term is going to equal zero. Therefore, we have a convergent alternating series. So we're diverging on the left side, converging on the right side. So here's what we're going to say. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. Open interval on the left side and a closed interval on the right side. Lock it up. There's our final answer. All right, I saved one glorious problem for you to try at home. So what we're going to do, you're going to identify both the radius and the interval of convergence, support your answer, and I'll be around tomorrow to check your work and see how confident you're feeling. Good luck.